Before he went blind 25 years ago, Wardell Jones was a mechanic for the Air Force. Remarkably, he has taught himself to paint. His apartment in Richmond's Nevin Plaza public housing project is filled with paintings of landscapes he remembers and imagines. Hey Wardell, it's Amy Harris, the reporter. On this day, he's meeting with Amy Julia Harris, a journalist with the Center for Investigative Reporting, who for the past six months has been documenting mismanagement and poor conditions in Richmond's public housing complexes. In Wardell's case, he hasn't had heat for more than a year. The housing authority says it fixed the problem in October. Can you feel up there? I don't feel anything. Okay, that's, it, it's on now. Can you hear the motor is running, but it doesn't come out. No, no heat. heat. No heat. So, Wardell, can you show us what do you do for heat? This my show, I turn it on for about two, three hours. Then it heats up, and I come back and I turn it off. You do that every day? Every day. Hmm. It says on here that it works. <laughs> you don't feel the heat, huh? Nope, I don't feel anything. <laughs> okay. Down the road is the six-story Hacienda housing complex. On the surface, it looks like many public housing projects across the nation, but residents call it the Hasi hellhole. Years of chronic mismanagement have led to a host of problems, like a roof that has been leaking for eight years. They've had to evacuate the entire sixth floor of Hacienda because there's mold and these stalactites of chemicals that are just dripping down from the roof. Squatters sometimes use the empty apartments on the floors below, there are a host of problems. Geneva Eaton, a grandmother of 12, has for the last year been complaining about a terrible infestation problem. Workers have come, but the problem persists. Every morning, she sets traps and washes her floors and walls in bleach. Sometimes she catches up to 12 mice per day. Her decrepit refrigerator remains infested with cockroaches, despite repeated requests to replace it. This is a health hazard to me. Bugs. I don't do bugs. I don't do mice. I'm scared of them. We shouldn't have to live like this. We're not dogs. On sunny days, Hacienda's courtyard is a gathering place, but at night, it can be frightening for elderly residents. Lighting here was broken for two years and only fixed in December. Rhonda Marshall was robbed twice. They had a gun, too. Man, you know what it was, youngsters. And I know they been belong to this building because we don't have no youngsters in this building. Visitors are supposed to enter at a security desk. But intruders have easy access because this gate almost never locks, as resident Dennis Lewis demonstrated. And you supposedly need a key card, but mm -hmm. as you see, you don't. The contract of the security firm that guards buildings in Richmond's public housing projects is about to expire. The issue was taken up at the January meeting of the Housing Authority Advisory Commission. The Housing Advisory Commission is a seven-member council appointed by the mayor that's supposed to advise the Housing Authority on all of the problems in people's apartments. And Commissioner Jackie Thompson wanted to know what needs to be done to find a new firm. How come this commission doesn't know that we are entering into a new contract? Tim Jones heads the Richmond Public Housing Authority. So if in fact it is of the opinion of this uh, board that we're not moving forward with this particular firm, we would make that decision then. But the original contract was well, for one year. But do we have year. to wait till February well, to we, make? We are actually in contract with them now. And the soonest we could do that would be with a 30-day notice. At the meeting, Tim Jones said, you know, don't worry about it. We're going to schedule a meeting. We have 30 days to cancel the contract. If we want to, it's going to be fine. We actually went back and looked at a copy of that security contract, and it turns out it's 60 days to cancel, and the Housing Authority has already missed the deadline. Internal U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development memos have criticized Jones for similar behavior in the past. Those same HUD memos also faulted Jones' overall leadership, chastising his agency for the, quote, total lack of internal controls. 
HUD called him straight out ineffective, and it said that he failed in a few key areas. So one job of the housing director is to just make sure that the finances are in order. And under Tim Jones's watch, you know, the Housing Authority is $7 million in debt. They haven't turned in their audits to the feds on time for years and years. HUD also said he didn't even respond to their emails. While Jones does have his supporters on the advisory commission, several are critical of him, none more so than Sylvia Gray White, a retired former public housing manager with decades of experience. I think it's the director. I what do you mean you think it's a director? I don't think he knows what he's doing. And as we're talking to her, we just hear this beeping horn. Uh, and it turns out it was another advisory commission member who said, look, you're not allowed to talk to the press. You're saying all of these negative things. Don't talk. <laughs> okay, you can't shut me up. You can't pay me to shut up. No. That's why they put me on this board, because I will tell you what's going on. Jones had agreed to an interview for this story, but citing Commissioner White's on-camera comments, he backed out. <laughs> At Richmond City Hall, Mayor Gail McLaughlin says she remains confident in the Housing Authority's executive director. I have always found um, Mr. Jones to be uh, extremely responsive, and every time I bring something to his attention, he's right there. So I'll continue to work with him. The problem, says the mayor, a longtime Green Party leader, is not Tim Jones, but the federal government and misplaced priorities. I'm working hard to do what I can, but don't uh, don't lay the, the at the feet of Richmond that we're not working hard enough when we have a president who is putting money into war and a president who has bailed out the banks to the tune of $29 trillion. In Richmond, the decision to hire or fire the executive director of housing primarily rests with the city. But HUD's top official in the western U.S., Ophelia Bescal, says there are other options. There's a provision in there if, you know, we get to a point where we believe the authority is totally mismanaged, where we can step in and take over the authority. It's sort of the la you know, it's the nuclear kind of option that we come to at the very end. A Freedom of Information request revealed that HUD staff thought firing Jones in 2012 might help resolve the problems, but noted likely opposition from Richmond's mayor and city council. The federal agency put Richmond under a strict improvement plan that, if not followed, could end in the nuclear option. Pascal says the Richmond Housing Authority has made improvements. Richmond is on track with its corrective action plan. For Geneva Eaton, it is too little, too late. Instead of fixing it right, here they are down there, making it look good for her downstairs, but look at the people up here, how we are living up here.